Good afternoon, and thank you for the chance to speak today. Uh, last year, I did a presentation about the tridactyl Nazca mammoth, which I will summarize today for those who are not familiar with the case. I will also provide an update of the latest results. At the end of 2014 in Nazca, Peru, Leandro Benedicto Rivera, known as Mario, discovered the Nazca mummies. The Nazca mummies only have three fingers and three toes. It is a significant discovery. The tridactyl Nazca mummies have been controversial due to conflicting views regarding their authenticity. In Peru, there has not been much media coverage of the Nazca mummies, but the mainstream archaeological Peruvian community made a statement in July 2017 that the tridactyl Nazca mummies were pre-Columbian human remains. The statement said they are the cultural heritage of the nation and were maliciously manipulated and even mutilated to appearance like the mummy Maria. For the last two year, years, there have been people who were trying to find every possible fault for the mummies, generating a lot of publicity, discrediting the scientists who have been studying the mummies since their discovery. In this presentation, I am only uh, providing factual information. This research has been made available by qualified professionals, including uh, radiologists, biologists, forensic pathologists, bone disease specialists, and medical surgeons. On November 19, 2018, the scientists presented the result of the analysis of the Nazca mummies over four hours. It took place in the Congress Hall of the Republic of Peru, led by Peruvian MP Armando Villanueva Mercado. He was the only MP present at the Congress on November 19, 2018. He invited the Peruvian Minister of Culture to the presentation, but the minister did not attend. Other academics guests attended, such as representatives from archaeology faculties of universities in Peru. Scientists from Mexico, France, Russia, in Peru presented the results based on radiocarbon-14 dating, high-resolution CT scans, and DNA <coughs> analysis at the Congress of the Republic of Peru. Last year, I had the opportunity to be at the Congress of the Republic of Peru, with which scientists and specialists from several countries spoke in support of the authenticity of the mummies. I am no scholar. But I was a school teacher in Peru, and for more than 20 years, I worked as a data uh, research analyst at the Westpac Bank in New South Wales, and later as an information technology, hardware, and so software for support in public schools in New South Wales. I studied uh, the evidence and spoken at length with some experts involved in the tridactyl Nazca mummies case. I have learned to understand many of the technical reports of tests performed by laboratories, and this afternoon I am happy to share with you with, uh, my experience. The Nazca civilization flourished on the southern coast of Peru from 200 BC and 600 CE. The Nazca lines are close to the Nazca town, about 400 kilometers south of Lima. The most impress impressive remnants of this civilization are the enormous figures. 
This image is an ancient geoglyph of the Nazca Lines, located in the desert of the south coast of Peru. The Nazca Lines are huge images, only visible from the air, which are geometrical perfect, with over 300 different geometric shapes, including animals and plants. The current thinking is the majority of lines were made by the Nazca people. The hummingbird in this picture is over 92 meters in length and was formed around 2,000 years ago. This place is near the area where Leandro Sarmiento, with the name of alias Mario, and his peers first found the mummies. This spider image is only visible uh, from the air at around uh, 45 meters long. This is also an example of the impressive Nazca lines. I have been traveling to the Andes in Peru to find out more about other strange beings and the people experiences with them for the last 14 years. My interest in speaking with local people in the Andes is to learn more about their stories and unusual experiences. This, uh, these tridactyl Nazca mummies were found in the Peruvian desert between the city Nazca and Palpa. Regarding the place of origin, it is close to the Nazca lines, the location on which has been undisclosed. I came across the Nazca mummies in my research, and I wanted to find out more about this subject. Uh, through my research, I realized that this topic is complex with varying accounts of the authenticity of the mummies and the nature of the discovery. Today, I will briefly share with you what I have learned so far. At the end of 2014, Leandro Benedicto Rivera, also known as Mario, was walking in the Nazca Desert near the Nazca Palpa of Peru when he spot an anomaly in one of the hills in the desert. As he approached, he noticed there was a solid rock structure on the side of the mountain. He started to take out the sand and soil and it took him many months to find that it was a cavity entrance. The place was dark, and with the torch, he could see inside the room there were hundreds of pink seashells on the floor. There were also several stones carved with forms resembling alien beings, representations of frogs, and many carved rocks in the shape of flying saucers. Mario could not understand why these representations were on the ground. And they also found two Peruvian mummies bundles wrapped in a woven mantle in the middle of the room, like this image. In this image, you can see in the center was a mummy in the fetal position so that the disease could travel to the afterlife in the same form in which she or he was born. They were buried with valuable materials such as precious metal, jewelry, beautiful pottery, weaving tools, and the interior layers were made of embroidery textiles. Mario came uh, uh, back after six months to the same place. This time Mario noticed that there were other walls and he decided to hit the walls to see if there was another room behind the walls. Eventual, eventually he made a hole to the wall and noticed on the other side was an underground entrance with large stones. He noticed the entrance sealed from inside. Mario and his friends kept walking and discovered more rooms with walls that they were two or three meters high. 
this photo is similar to what he describes. He said the stones in the room were similar to the architecture at the Sacsayhuaman or Machu Picchu in Cusco, Peru. They entered into another room, and in the middle was a sarcophagus made of a stone, about two meters long by one meter wide, covered with a thick stone lid. Mario felt that it was very challenging to remove the cover of the mysterious stone sarcophagus to see what was inside. This photo here is for reference only. They return day after day and try to open the intriguing sarcophagus. Finally, they were able to successful, successfully to move, thinking that they, they will find gold objects. They could not take good pictures because the cameras and mobiles did not work very well as there was interference at the time. Finally, when they opened the sarcophagus, all were astonished to see that there were remarkable bodies covered with the white dust. It is diatomaceous earth. Inside the sarcophagus, they found many objects made of metal, including small ring stones. The first picture on the top of the left looks like lit bottles, and when you shake it, you can feel that there was something inside, like a liquid. These are tridactyl Nazca mummies were covered with infusions and vegetable oil as well as diatomaceous earth, which has remarkable antimicrobial and desiccated properties. No mummies in Peru or elsewhere have ever been preserved in this way. Proce Professor Galeski, who is the representative of the first medical university of Russia, pointed out that all the samples were biological origin according to the chemical analysis. They found a significant presence of cadmium as part of the chemical composition of diatomaceous earth. Dr. Galeski said that this is the most interesting that the diatomaceous earth has undergone a technolog technological treatment to achieve a consistency of very fine padua, which is no characteristic to find in other place on Earth. The biochemist Dr. Clara Martinez interpreted the results of the tridactyl Nazca mummies at Congress. The results were carried out by several laboratories around the world. She classifies the specimens in three groups according with the type of analysis. In the first group is Maria, Josefina, Alberto, Victoria, and Guaguita. There has been a deep genome sequence of DNA analysis in these specimens of group one by numerous laboratories. The second group is the second image on the right, consists of two loose pieces analyzed by Lakehead University Paleo DNA of Canada. And it was an, a, a, only an exploratory data analysis. The third image on the right is the third group, and it shows a small pieces of 21 to 30 centimeters. There were no carbon uh, 14 tested or DNA tested. These pieces belong to Raul Ronceros, also known as a Krawix. As mentioned, there are similar representations of beings in other cultures, such as India. This cave painting shows a being with three fingers and three toes. It is 10,000 years old cave painting discovered in India, in the Chamara region. In Peru, there are many representations of beings with three fingers, 
We can see them in the cave painting, in ceramics, in ornamental drawings, and in the fabrics of indigenous people. The image is a Chimu textile from the north coast dated at around 1900, 1470 BC. These are representation, representations in different cultures from ancient Peru showing beings with three fingers. The image on the left is a bib made of shell and stone beads from Chan Chan, the capital city of Peruvian Chimú culture. The image on the right is a piece of pottery with three fingers from the Nazca culture that flourished around 100 BC to AD 800. This stone is from Kotosh civilization, 1800, Ambo, Guanuco, Peru. This stone recently found by the Peruvian explorer Baby Trujillo Baskets in Buena Vista near Ambo, Huanuco, Peru. You may notice this stone is a carving with cross hands of five to three fingers. And on the right, the double helix resembles the strands of DNA. And on the top of the stone, three points like stars of Orion. His his grandparents told him that they had seen little beings from time to time over the years. I, ha I have also heard about these creatures over the years in my travels to Peru and in talking to the local people of the Andes in Peru. These are archaeological remains that represent beings with reptilian physiognomy. The first image is a 7,000 years old humanoid statue with lizard-like features. It was discovery, discovered by scientists at the archaeological site of, of Ul, Ul, Alubaid, Mesopotamia. The second image is an ancient dogu pottery with large eyes made in Japan, dated from 10,000 BC to 300 BC. And the third image belongs to the ancient Mayan civilization, which inhabited Puebla around AD 400 in Mexico. This image is from Mayan culture in Teotihuanca in Mexico, 1,700 years ago. The biologist Jose Rio de la Cruz pointed out that this is a recent discovery of the Mayan presence in Teotihuana, Mexico. <laughs> this phot photograph corresponds to a small tridactyl mummy exhibit in a private museum in, Bel in Belgium an unknown species of unidentified DNA, and it was found in the town of Ica, Peru, many years ago. In July 2017, we were given special access to see the tridactyl Nazca mummies. When I was in front of the mummies, I was shocked at first, and I had this expression like Brian Foster. This body seems incredible and resembled a strange being in our world. Brian Foster studied the DNA, DNA of the Paracas elongated skulls of Peru. The formological characteristics of the mummies are very familiar to those of the aliens from a Steven Spielberg film, E.T. Dr. Horace Drew, who has postdoctoral research on DNA and chromosomes at the MCR Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, England, brought to my attention to this image after I did my presentation last year about the tridactyl Nazca mummies, and I want to share with you. His quotation is, some of the new Peruvian mummies just discovered in 2016, show three long fi fingers and flat fingertips, like those drawn in a crop 
pictures from England, 2012. Now, I will show the team of scientists that took part in this investigation on the Nazca mummies. This is Jose de la Cruz Rio Lopez, graduated from the Autonomous University of Campeche in Mexico. He is a biologist since 2000 and from 2005. Uh, uh, from 2005 to 2018, worked in the area of public of health as a laboratory bio biologist. This is Dr. Jose Salce Benitez. He's a forensic physician and medical chief officer of the Mexico Navy. Dr. Raimundo Salas, a radiologist with 30 years of experience in his field. Dr. Enzo Salazar Bibanco from Aquino University, Bolivia. This is Dr. Mario Esparza, Peruvian ma microbiologist from National University, Trujillo, and Doctor in Biology Science from the Faculty of Science, Chile University, and Göttingen University, Germany. He studied the Nazca mummies independently. This is Dr. Mary Jesse, is an assistant professor of radiology diagnostic from the University of Colorado, USA. These are the names and specialists of Russian team of experts and scientists who carry out the study of the Nazca mummies and presented on behalf of all by Dr. Galeski at the Congress of the Republic of Peru on November 19, 2018. This is Professor Galeski Dimitri from the Department of Maxillofacial Anatomy of the First Paklov State Medical St. Petersburg University. He holds both a medical degree and PhD. He is maxillofacial surgeon, fully qualified for the tomography analysis of anatomical structure and he is also dentist. The mummy named Maria, found in the tomb near, tomb near the Nazca Lines in southern of Peru. Maria is 1.68 centimeters long. She was found covered with diatomaceous earth. The body preservation is excellent. She has a uh, all internal organs desiccated except for the kidney. She has no hair or, ear or ears. She has big eyes and a small nose. According, with, uh, according to tissue samples of Maria, the results carbon dating died about 1,740 years ago, which means she lives at the same time of the Nazca lines. Dr. Raimundo Salas' evaluation on Maria is that her shoulders, elbows, and ankles, ankles are intact. The shape of the skull is very elongated, and brain capacity is 20% uh, larger than any human skull. There is zero evidence from the CTA scan of any artificial manipulation. Dr. Uh, Jesse said that she checked the scan's images and she does not see any suture lines. There is no bones that are separated in the skull. <coughs> the radiologist, uh, Reinaldo Salas, said that Maria Hens did not suffer any damage. He pointed out that the joint capsules are intact in the correlation between each joint is perfect. Dr. Salce said that Maria's hands and feet, it is not possible for two fingers in each side to have been cut off and the phalanges added because the anatomical correspondence of each bone and the relationship between them determine that it is not possible to alter or falsify these hands. The Russian radiologist Natalia Saloshnaya analyzed the tomographies and X-rays of bodies made by, um, by radiologists 
Dr. Raimundo Salas Alfaro, giving her certification of the absence of cuts or manip manipulation detectable in them. The CT scan shows the intricacy of the internal organs, which are intact and seem well preserved, according to Dr. Salse. The hands have horizontal fingerprints, unlike those of humans. The biologist Jose de la Cruz Rios described Maria's fingertips have a similar ending as a theropod extinct dinosaurs. The Mexican biologist Jose de la Cruz Rio said that the last, the, the, the last three phalanges adopt a peculiar shape. The toes are a small size and irregular shapes as a whole. They form an angle of 90 degrees ending with rounded pads with horizontal finger uh, prints. The biologist Jose de la Cruz explained that in Homo sapiens, the Achilles heel is inserted in the calcaneus bone. In Maria feet, the Achilles heel is inserted in the astrologous bone, right at the, in the calcaneus bone. Dr. Raimundo Salas Alfaro pointed, points out that Maria suffered an accident or a spinal fracture in D7, and it was affected by sclerosis, which indicates that Maria continued living after uh, this fracture. Geyer Entertainment Group USA sent issue samples of Maria to Beta Analytical Laboratory for radiocarbon 14 dating for analysis, and Maria Maria's body is 1,740 years. Also, Jaime Mossan sent tissue samples of Maria to the Institute of Physics Lab, Laboratory, National Autonomous University of Mexico, and the dating result was 1,771 years old. In July 2017, British uh, researcher and ufologist Steve Mira and Barry uh, Fitzgerald had, had accesses, uh, access to the tridactyl Nazca mummies during his visit to Peru. On the first uh, visit, I helped him them with uh, translation and they were not allowed to take any samples of the Nazca mummies. Then, at the end of July 2017, I learned that Barry Fitzgerald returned to Peru and got samples from Maria in Guahuita. Steve Mira asked the Incari Institute of Cusco, Peru, to take tissues samples of Maria in Guaguita to verify the authenticity of the mummies, as they did not trust Gaia Earth Determinant Group USA, Jaime Mosan, and others. They said their goal were to get a credible DNA analysis with Oxford and Glasgow laboratories. But finally, Sri Lanka laboratory did the ancient DNA test. Then, in November 2017, Steve Mira got the results from the Sri Lanka Laboratory <laughs> Report of Ancient DNA, which analyzed Maria food tissue. Steve Mer Mer Mira made the statement at the conference and to the media in appearance in newspapers and also one of the interviews with Linda Malton in May 2018. Steve, Steve Mira claims that Maria could be a new species of human. Uh, Steve Mira claims that Maria is 95% primate and 5% agno, 95% primate and 5% agno genome. He believes the finding could alter alter the history books forever. Uh, Steve Miller said that his team are the only ones that have managed 
to obtain DNA results. The biochemist Dr. Clara Martinez interpreted the data as presented in the ancient DNA report from this laboratory. She said, she said this report is a preliminary, exploratory, and inconclusive report of ancient DNA analysis of Maria Food. Around May 2018, the Peruvian detractor, McLovin, and his group were thinking of investigating Steve Mira. And I passed the message to the CEO, Sohar Entertainment Global Group. The Peruvian McLovin did a video with comments about Steve Mira. Then, a few, later, a few days later, Steve Mira has changed his position his position radically. He published in his Facebook that the Nazca mummies are fake and his sources of information were from the Peruvian McLovin. He became deeply involved with him. Who is Luke, Luca McLovin? He's Peruvian. No name, no face. Luca McLovin has a conversation on the internet with his group. He recognizes that, the, that he belongs to the Peruvian armed forces. McLovin said, there is a whole team of Peruvian armed forces that are working independently, and we know the activities of all those who are involved in the tridactyl Nazca mummies. Then, the next day, he delete, deleted his video but there are copies around about this conversation. Jaime Mozal, third millennial from Mexico, organized an autosomal DNA test with Biotemol Laboratory of Mexico to verify if there is a correspondence between Maria Hen and food and body. The result of the laboratory shows that only 33.6% of Maria DNA corresponds to Homo sapiens. After refining the comparison with the BLAST database, it shows that there is 20% of DNA of Maria corresponds to bacteria, virus, and microorganisms, and the rest 46-40 of, of of the genome does not correspond with Homo sapiens or any species that exists on Earth. The Incari Institute organized an autosomal DNA test with Lakehead University Paleo DNA of Canada to verify if there are any correspondence be between Maria, spine, hands, and feet. The result of time from the laboratory of paleo DNA is that Maria vertebra, hand, and feet are corresponding to each other. The Incari Institute also requested a massive nuclear DNA sequencing, and the result of Dr. Sarah Cowan shows that only 33.68% of Maria DNA correspond to Homo sapiens in 18. Uh, 42 bacteria and 47, 91% genome does not correspond with Homo sapiens or any species that exist on Earth. Some organizations in Russia study the tissue samples of DNA of Maria and Guaguita. The St. Petersburg Medical Genetics Institute in Russia is a research organization that was testing the hand, foot, and body of Maria and released the following statement. The body, fingers, and toes of Maria have the same chemical composition of and DNA. It is one person. This addresses discussions where people claim the body could be different pieces put together. St. Petersburg University D and exon analysis for a massive nuclear DNA sequencing, finding that 
uh, formaria only 23.8 correspond to human genome, but the population analysis showed that Maria did not belong to any species identified on planet Earth. These small mummies have characteristics of reptile or on humanoid form. On the first image, Josefina is on the left and Alberto is on the right. They have been preserved in diatomaceous earth. They are still preserving their organs. It is human with reptilian characteristics. No hair, no aircule, no soul. Alberto's height is 60.5 centimeters. According to biologist Jose de la Cruz Rios, these tridactyl Nazca mummies have a scale skin, as you can see in the second image. Josefina high is 56 centimeters. Their head is almost shaped, according to the carbon 14 test results, are 800 years old. The forensic physician, Dr. Jose Salce, has determined that all bodies have severe symptoms of bone disease and malnutrition. They have ribs in the form of semicircle. In this image, you can see the base of the skull. Humans and many species on Earth has a round or void forming magnum. According to, according to the physician, Dr. Jose Salsi, these skulls are different from any human skulls. The structure of the skull has a large square hole where the spinal cord accesses the brain in the dry center of the skulls, as opposed to the rear third of the skull in human. No known uh, animal exists with this uh, configuration. Their neck appears to be potentially retractable. The forensic physician Jose Salce said Josefina and Alberto have more characteristics of reptilian type of creature. It looks human, but they are not human. human. The skull is elongated. There are no ears. Uh, Dr. Galeski from St. Petersburg University points out that Josefina's skull structure also contains metal. The opening of the mouth is 15 millimeter length without lips, teeth, or muscles for chewing. The biologist Jose uh, de la Cruz Rio Lopez point, pointed out during his observation found behind the mouth there is orifices. And and this being could have fed by aspiration of liquids. Professor Galiski said that Josefina experienced some traumatic injuries to her jaw and spine, and there is a correlation in distance between the injuries that suggest an attack by some uh, canine animal. She appears to have survived some of her injuries because of bone grown around them. Professor Galeski points out that there is evidence of some sophisticated medical treatment to the injuries and implants that, to his knowledge, could not have been done, done by human hands 1,200 years ago. The fercula is a bone in the shape of fork that has only birds and theropod dinosaurs. Both clavicles are fused to form a single bone. The biologist Jose de la Cruz points out the hand consists of a single corporal bone and three fingers, each of them having three phalanges ending in a flat claw. This tridactyl characteristic three fingers and the hand in pronation position is therapeutic characteristics of extinct dinosaurs. The biologist Jose de la Cruz Rio regarding the food of Josefina said the anatomy of the food is completely different compared to human species. The single bone constitutes the pot serves as a soul. It is found in a group of birds called 
casualized. On the left, <coughs> you can see a picture that shows the pelvic structure of humans. And on the right is Alberto Hip. Peruvian General Sergi, uh, Sergio Ramiro Hermosa looked at the X-rays of Alberto, and uh, his comments include that he noticed the bone structure is damaged, and in his opinion, they tried to solve the problem with a metallic device to correct the deficit. Okay, leave it there. The biologist Jose de la Cruz points out the bones of Josefina and Alberto are hollow, but rigid, similar to the structures of birds' bones. This anatomical feature is characteristic of the theropods and birds. They are certainly not made from human body parts because no human body has hollow. In this exercise, and tomography image, Josefina, we can observe three X-shaped objects in the belly. These images were taken by the Peruvian radiologist Raimundo Alba. The biologist Jose Rio said the symmetrical shape of these eggs is typical in recti reptilians. <coughs> the size of three eggs range from 2.0 centimeters and the shape is symmetrical characteristics of the reptilians. The forensic physician, Dr. Jose Salce, confirms these shapes are biological or part of the same body. The image on the right, the biologist Jose de la Cruz points out that the 4A is initial stage of development, located in the ovarian canal of the left abdominal cavity. This shows that this being was in a state of active reproduction. The biologist Jose Rio said that Josefina has cloaca fissure, like reptiles in the lower body, inside and across what would be its legs. This indicates as it would be reptiles, the possibility that it would, de it would deposit the eggs using the condyle, <coughs> the cloak. Cloaca in rectile is the slit opening under the tile. Josefina has a metal piece across her without a known purpose. The metal seems integrated into the skin. These are the implants of on Josefina. The metal were analyzed by uh, in Yemen in laboratory in Lima, Peru. The analysis of this report was made by Lillian Christopher, science engineering. Josefina metallic implant on the chest is 85% um, copper from the pre-Columbian period. The metallic implant on the finger is 78 iron and 16% chromium and 5% carbon. Uh, the, the metal implant on the hand is 60% gold, 30% silver, and 10% copper. And the metallic implant of Alberto hip is 50% silver and 2% copper. This, this image is another smaller body known as Victoria. It was discovered without a head. The scientists were able to analyze the body, taking samples from the neck and hip. Victoria is 56 centimeters long, with three fingers on the hands and four phalanges. Feet has three toes with three phalanges. 11 pairs of ribs, including two floating pairs. Jaime Mozan sent tissue samples of Victoria to Infinite Mexico Laboratory of, uh, for radiocarbon-14 dating for analysis, and the image on the left shows that Victoria is 791 years old. Incari Institute sent also tissue samples of Maria to Institute 
of Physics of Flaminense Federal Brazil Laboratory for radiocarbon-14 dating for analysis. And the image on the right shows that Victoria radiocarbon age is 1,040 years old. Dr. Jose Salce said, Victoria has the same kind of characteristics, the same bone proportion, and the same three fingers as the other mummified bodies. Jaime Mosan and Gaiar Entertainment Group USA provided tissues and bone fragment samples of Victoria to Biotemol Molecular Laboratory in Mexico for DNA analysis to the Synforgen Laboratory for the next generating DNA sequencing test. And this results indicate a cervical bone sample of Victoria 36.27 correspond to Homo sapiens. A hip bone sample of Victoria 29.12% correspond to Homo sapiens. Jen, Jaime and Geyer Entertainment Group USA requested to Abrax Biosystem for a bioinformatic and genomic analysis of samples extracted from Victoria in order to identify the possible biology origin. A cervical bone sample of Victoria 14.29 correspond to Homo sapiens. And hip bone sample of Victoria 15.25% correspond to Homo sapiens. The Incari Institute took skin samples of Victoria for analysis. The histological study was carried out by Diagnostic Clinic Laboratory of Pathology of Campeche, Mexico. And the biologist Jose de la Cruz was in charge of the microphoto analysis performed under the microscope, confirming that Victoria is reptilian type. This is in fact infant the res that resem resembles Maria Anatomico. According to Professor Dimitri Galisky, Wawita skeleton structure is similar to human. The, the skull has irregular asymmetric shape. Most likely it is congenital deformity. Professor Dimitri Galisky said Wawita has multiple injuries. The spine and the ribs appear damaged as a result of hitting with a sharp object. The image on the left shows the neck is much damaged. The image on the right shows fractures and separations of ribs on the right and fractures of the pelvic bones. Professor Dimitri and radiologist Raimundo Salas said there are signs of manipulation and the CT scan images show that two fingers and toes were removed from each hand and foot. Wawita's body is decomposed so much that it's unable to be touched. It appears this mummy was mutilated in either cares of life or after death to have similar appearance as a Maria mummy. This is the third group as Dr. Uh, Dr. Clara Martinez classified according with the analysis done by the laboratories. The single head is not the same as Josefina or Alberto, and the large hand is 30 centimeters long. Jaime Mosan sent brain tissue samples of the single head to Infernal Mexico Laboratory for carbon-14 dating analysis. And the result shows a radium carbon date of 1,052 years old. The Incari Institute Peru sent brain tissue samples to Caribbean Trace Genetic uh, Laboratory for carbon-14 dating analysis. The result shows a radium carbon date of 1,000 10 years old. Jaime Mosan sent skin tissues of the large hand of Infinite Mexico Laboratory for carbon-14 dating analysis. 
The results from hen tissues shows a radiocarbon date of 1,205. In Cari Institute, Peru, sent skin hen tissues in bone hen pa powder to Caribbean traces for carbon-14 dating analysis. The result is 1,080 years old. The skin tissues analysis, analysis for the large hen shows a radiocarbon date of 7,270. Then Gaia Entertainer Group USA sent skin hen tissues. And the skin tissues analysis result of the large hen shows a radiocarbon date of 6,420 years old. Regarding the, the large hen, there is discrep discrepancy in the dating of the skin, 7,270 uh, years, and the bone hen powder shows 1,080. The microbi uh, microbiologist, Dr. Maria Espa uh, Mario Esparza, hypothesis is that the analysis of carbon dating of 7,270 and 6,420 would be due to traces of carbon that the skin absorb this material that is more ancestral or that the large hen may have been treated with organic materials when embalmed. This small, these small pieces belong to Paul Roncero, no Scrawix. No analysis has ever been done, neither carbon-14 dating or DNA analysis. One of these pieces, Roncero broke the leg, he, he glued it, then gave to the Minister of Culture staff for analysis. The doctor found that it was glued on. And based on this, the team of Minister of Culture said that this is a fraud. And as a consequence, Maria, Josefina, and Alberto also are found fraud. And they don't take into consideration all the results done by various laboratories and universities. These are the laboratories that have analyzed the biology biological samples of the tridactyl specimens. At the, at the present, a group of Peruvian archaeologists are doing everything possible to stop any investigation but other Peruvian universities. The University of San Marco was going to take in charge of the specimens to study in depth, but it was stopped by the intervention of this uh, Peruvian group. Then the Peruvian congressman Armando Villanueva was going to pass a bill that would preserve and protect these bodies and to make them available to scientists for around the world for examination and study. Now, Jaime Mosang in Incari Institute and Joyce Mantilla, a journalist, are dealing with, uh, with the Luis Gonzaga University, Ica Peru, to study and confirm the analysis carried out by various laboratories and universities around the world. Thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you to the Institute uh, President Inkari Thierry Jamin, uh, Tercer Milenio, Jaime, Jaime Mosan, sorry, the bi biologist Jose de la Cruz Rio from Mexi Mexico, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Dimitri Galinsky, uh, Konstantin Korotkov from Russia, uh, Dr. Mario Esparza, molecular biologist from Peru, uh, the Peruvian journalist Jose Mantilla and the journalist astronomer Fernando Correa Dominguez. And uh, thank you here in Australia, Wendy, for supporting me. 
It was very hard for two years to keep a trace of um, this investigation. Thank you.